What are your thoughts on Vietnamese cuisine? You know, I'm, I I love pho. I'm a I'm a fan of banh mi, although I'm not much for pate. So you know, but like a, a more like a fusion style banh mi, no problem. Um, and then all other um, Vietnamese food, I have no idea what it is. Um, but I've been anytime there's you know pre-pandemic, if we were exploring like a Vietnamese uh, menu. Sometimes I'd be like, you know what, I always get pho. And then when I'm tired of pho, I always get a banh mi. So sometimes I'll just be like, give me a number like 92. Beef balls with, you know, lemongrass rice. Sometimes I'm like, this one's kind of a whiff. I would have rather have had, um, you know, I would have rather have had some, some banh mi. Sometimes I'm like, oh baby, that was a good choice. And also, like, in my opinion, I, I love all rolls, okay? But I think when it comes to, f like, fried rolls in Asian cuisine, the spring roll reigns supreme, in my opinion. A salad roll, I, I'll eat it. I don't mind it, but I, I don't love it. You know, I'm mostly just like, I wish this was deep fried. <laughs> And then the spring roll, I'm always like, I love it. And then like the vinegar sauce that it comes with, delicious. An egg roll, I also love it. But I, I don't get Chinese food very often. I, I wish I got it more, honestly. I do love an egg roll, though. And I think that that's all the rolls I can think of. I mean, in that same vein, like a sushi roll is not really the same thing, but... What is Lumpia? I don't know Lumpia. I gotta I gotta play more Cook Serve Delicious 3, I think. Do you like pretzels? Oh. Love them. Haven't had them in a while. Long I, as a kid I was only like a hard pretzel kinda kinda guy. As an adult, I love a hard pretzel, don't get me wrong. But I, I, I respect the soft pretzel now as well as an adult, I think. Really, like, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I like almost every food on the planet. Kate, she's she's been ribbing me a little bit about being, like, more of a picky eater than I used to be. It's not really the case, to be honest. But, like, the it seems like it, because the... The Korean meal service, I mean, it's not really like a meal service. They just bring like home-cooked Korean food like once a week. They have a lot of dishes in the in that repertoire that I don't um, really love. But mostly that's like, it's because of, they, they occupy kind of the same niche. Like one of them is Bude Jigae, which is basically like a, it's just like a fricked up stew that's got like instant ramen noodles and uh, like hot, cut up hot dogs and stuff in it and like bologna and stuff like that is not for me. Um, and then like a, honestly like a lot of this Korean banchan which are like the side dishes that they deliver are like um, there's a lot of sliced up hot dogs, Sli sliced up Vienna sausages and like, you know, lightly steamed broccoli and stuff like that. I'm like, they, they, they love the, the Vienna sausages, man. I, that was just, I can't believe we made it through there. Those, those I just have a little bit of an uphill battle on, but I can't believe you don't like Boudé Jigé. I'm honestly like I I feel like it's one of those foods that is like not that unusual to dislike. It's like a it's a soup with like a hot dogs and baked beans and instant noodles in it. I'm like I think I I don't know. That, I'm not saying like I I understand that there's you know tens of millions of people who enjoy it, but but for me personally, I'm like uh, I just I don't know. Doesn't feel doesn't feel nice for me. Um. But then, like, I, I, I do, I love Korean food, but there are some that I don't get down with. Like, I don't, I don't like tteokbokki either. I mean, it's gonna sound, like, uh, comical, but, like, I don't... 
I don't like dock that much. Like, like Korean rice cake. If it's part of a dish, like, I'll, I'll eat it. But if it's, like, the dish, I'm like, eh, it's not really... It's not for me. But then, like, you know, Korean soups, I'm all about. Uh, obviously, like, Korean meats are, like, a gimme. You know, galbi, um, uh, bulgogi. I don't even, then I'm like, I don't even like bulgogi that much. <laughs> Dwedji bulgogi I'm more into, and I'll eat bulgogi, but... Maybe I don't like as much Korean food as I thought I did. Bazinga? Hey, now. We only talk about young Sheldon here. Kimchi jjigae? Love it. Almost, and I say almost simply because of bude jjigae, any Korean um, soup that's red and is served in a dukbegi, like 100%, I'm like, yes, please. I haven't actually had uh, dak galbi since, uh, since I lived in Korea, but it was like my favorite meal when I lived there for sure. Um, okay, this, dude, the banter engine has helped me out a lot here. Okay, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna make the corner? We're gonna make the corner. Sunday? No, I don't like Sunday either. I'm really not that picky of an eater, but you you are you're you're landing on basically all of the Korean foods that typically Westerners decide are not for them. Like blood sausage and um, you know, stuff like that. Like, I don't like makjang either. A makjang restaurant opened up uh, in my neighborhood when I lived in Korea. So it's basically just like... It's pork intestines. Um, but cooked in like a Korean barbecue style. And I was like, ah, just... I, I ate it a couple of times. Like, I ate it the first time and was like... You know, I didn't really like it the first time, but uh, let's give it a second try. And then the second try I was like, nope, still bad. Sorry. Oh, jeez. Okay, oh, this is just air strafe. This is just air strafe. What's up, Corey? What's up? Oh, who? Oh, my God. It hurts. It hurts. It's all right, you know what? We're trying again. We're trying again. <laughs> anyway, but I'm I'm really like <laughs> pain. Sorry, Jay. Sorry. This this is the one, man. Believers in chat, rise up. Although we will not allow channel betting. I pretty much like any food. Like if we're in North America, let's come up with a hypothetical situation here. Hey, let me put it this way. Anytime I'm in like a group of people. When people ask, like, what do you want to eat? I'm always the guy who says I'm easy. And unlike most people who say that, I actually, like, anything in North America that you suggest is not going to be a problem. My number one criteria for a restaurant is, like, it being close. <laughs> and can we, can we be seated within the next 15 to 30 minutes? Sorry, sorry. Okay, I will say I've never had... I haven't had that much, like, southern soul food. Grits I actually like. I got no problem with grits. Chitlins are... That's pork intestine again, right? Having never tried that version of it, I'd give it a shot, but... Uh, it's it's pork skin? Oh, well, I, honestly, I think I'd, I think I'd enjoy it. Okra? I, I like okra. I haven't had it in a long time, but... Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> triangles and silkworms? Look, here's the thing. If we're going out to a place that sells triangles, I might just say I'll meet you after. Because the, the only triangle restaurant I've ever been to only served variations of triangles and then mustard alongside. If we're going to a place and you're trying to get some bondegi, I would honestly be pretty stoked because if they sell bondegi, I could probably get some some makali and maybe like a, a like pajan or something like maybe like a quick hemul pajan, something like that or a kimchi jan. What are triangles? 
There, it's, uh, in Japanese, it's called konyaku. They are... Cory knows. They're made with the devil's tongue plant. <laughs> Basically, it was like, Kate and I were in Japan, and we, we stopped in at like a kind of a hole-in-the-wall restaurant just outside of this park. And Kate was like, everything on the menu is just different variations of, you know, konyaku, which I've never really been a huge fan of. And then, um... Kate is fluent in Japanese, but she didn't know what the... what any of the dishes were. They were basically just different versions of, of gelatin. Um, so we ordered like two random things, and then... Uh, it was just a, a plate of... you know, jelly triangles with... I'm dying, man. With yellow mustard on the side. It was... It was you know, not to be disrespectful, right? Like, uh, you know, th there were people in there that were loving life, but it, it was the worst meal. It was the probably the least I've enjoyed a meal in my adult life. I, I will eat almost anything. I'm being completely sincere. Like, I think if you gave me the choice between eating, like... <laughs> I would, I would rather, like, eat a crushed up eggshell than, than eat that again. And it's not, like, insincere. Time back to meditation. Konyaku is like a 3 out of 10. It's inoffensive, but not actively bad. I, like, I, I understand. I, I think that's what bothers me, is that, like, you know how, like, some people, they can't, like, go to sleep? Um, without having, like, earbuds in because the, you know, the, their own inner voice will, like, you know, make it impossible for them to quiet, uh, their mind into a place of stillness. Okay. Um, I think that's, like, the, the absence of any flavor is, is what made it so offensive to me. Is that my brain, like, filled in the flavor and I was like, I don't like this. It's, uh... And especially, I mean, like, as a tourist in Japan, when you got so many other options, oh, to get konyaku. Yeah, a, a, an edible reflection of the soul? No thank you. It wasn't expensive, though. I've seen people be like, how much is it? I think it was like, it was like seven bucks a plate or something. But anyway, this all started with, you know, there, there are foods I dislike, but for the most part, I'm like, I'm, I'm very easy. I'm a very easy eater. No, I don't really like natto either. I've never had it, so I can't say that, but like, I mean... It just seems like one of those foods that you only eat to be like, maybe I'll like this gross thing. Like, I, I, I did that all the time in Korea. I ate all the gross foods in Korea. Some of them I ate way too much, like bandegi. Bandegi is not good. I probably ate, like, you know, 500 grams of it in the year that I lived in Korea. I don't know, just to be like, maybe this time. Maybe this time I'll, I'll love eating bugs. Okay, we're skipping. <laughs> we're dead. We're definitely dead. Oh, I thought you were talking about puffed rice discs. Oh, pung twiggy. Ah, no, I'll eat any kind of like, you know, cooked carbohydrate, I think. Any any kind of flour plus heat, like sign me up. I'm not I'm not picky. I recognize, like I said, I'll eat anything, and then I just listed like 30 things I won't eat. But like, we're talking about stuff that's like, you know... The blood of a, of a hog cooked in its own intestines and bugs. Whereas most people, I feel like, are like, I like spinach, but I don't like romaine. You know? If, if a menu has two things on it, in all likelihood I will find something I'll, I'll enjoy eating. That's true. Who dislikes romaine? 
It's a superior lettuce. You ever had frog's legs? I had frog's legs uh, one time at a very, very fancy restaurant in Vancouver, and they were delicious. They were, they were fantastic. I did feel like I was kind of like, the novelty of it was that it was frog. It wasn't like it was an incredible um, meal, or, or it was like an appetizer, but it wasn't like it was an incredible meal. It was like, oh, it's frog. You're eating it for the experience, kind of. Hey, don't knock iceberg lettuce. Like, I, I'm, I'm pro iceberg. I do get, like, you know, it's, it's not the best tasting green out there, but... I don't know, it's kind of, it's like eating an edible ice cube, you know? It's, it's, it's refreshing. But, I mean, if you're giving me the choice, I'm, I'm a cabbage man through and through. I mean, yes, technically all ice cubes are edible, but, like, if, if you're eating ice cubes when we're in public together, like, we're, we're not gonna be hanging out too much. Okay, we got a single save here. Just, I, I think if you believe the cannonball can hurt you, then you're safe. By the way, Sinvicta, when are you going to play this? Alt F4 is the new sensation. Is taking Twitch by storm. You don't munch uh, on an ice cube while you're waiting for your check in the restaurant? Um, when I was a kid, I used to eat ice cubes. But I kind of, I don't want to say I grew out of it like it's a thing that only kids do. Very few things while eating actually, like, bother me. Like, you know, some people are like, oh, they, like, eat with their mouth open. Oh, they're a loud eater. Like, that stuff doesn't bother me. Oh, my God. <laughs> just, just take me down. That stuff doesn't bother me, but like, um, people who eat ice cubes kind of annoys me just because it's so freaking loud, man. Okay, just hydrate, hydrate, take a break, hydrate. <clears throat> hmm. I mean, the best place to die is on the first jump. <clears throat> Rip Alamo Draft House, but I once had a guy eat ice next to me uh, the whole movie. See, that's just ignorant. Like, I don't know what's wrong with with people like that. Eating ice through the whole movie? Oh, yo, Apollo, thanks for the raid. I heard you were playing some chess. Playing chess? You mind a bet coins, you little shit? We're doing again. I, I said this last time you raided. We're we're doing something your audience is very familiar with, which is I um, play a video game and then answer questions about whether I enjoy eating various parts of a chicken. Do I like like chicken chicken skin? Yes, absolutely. Thigh and breast? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the leg in general, of course. I, I gotta tell you though, can I tell you something? I, I had this thought. I had two Hello Fresh meals this week that were uh, baked chicken breast. And I said to myself, self, I think I think I respect myself more than baked chicken breast. I, th I think I'm, I've grown out of it. Like, a breaded chicken breast? Of course, for a, for a nugget or a you know a chicken katsu or something like that, absolutely. But it, but just a, is there anything like less inspiring when you look at it from a from a meal perspective than like a, a chicken breast that's like tepid and baked? And then like the first one, the first meal was like get a little sear on it first and then put it in the oven on top of the vegetables. And I was like, that's nice. It has a little, 
it's got some uh, it's got some some brownness to to the sides of it and it has a little bit of like a crust and stuff like that which is nice the second one was like nah man just freaking put that sucker in there and I, when it came out it was just like just like pure white like no seasoning at all and I, I was pouring over the the recipe like I was like, you really don't want me to like add like salt and pepper to this? And it was like, nah, don't worry about it. We're gonna dust it with almonds later. But I will say, when I was eating it, I got uh I got the Frank's red hot out after like the first couple of bites. And Kate was like, You're crazy, this is delicious. I was like, you know, if I could if I could get that that meta no matter what, like if, if I could always Oh my god. If I could always have Kate love the food and I'm like, ah, 50-50 on it, that's fine by me. Here we go. Here we go. I do season my food. It's just that this time, the recipe was like... It didn't say don't season, but it literally, it says season with salt and pepper. So I, I, I try to follow the recipe to the, uh, to the letter. Oh my god. Because sometimes... They'll have you season like later on in a dish. Sometimes they'll be like season it right now. Sometimes they'll be like season it later. Sometimes they'll be like season it non-stop. So I followed the... I followed the recipe by the book and I, I regretted it immensely. I promise you I'm... For the most part when I cook I am not that kind of person you'll see on Twitter that's like just cooked a meal for Bay and it's just like... You know... Like a, a like potato matter, and then also like a, an unseasoned chicken breast. This was an exception. Come on, man! I need this save. Okay, well, I don't need this save. Do you like spam? Spam is like heavily underrated, in my opinion. Straight straight out the can. No, but sliced and fried, it's actually amazing. By the way, I just have to acknowledge this, because someone said you should taste your food while you cook it. It's a baked chicken breast, my man. What do you want me to do? Like when it's halfway done in the oven, when it's, when it's still medium rare, you want me to buy, pull that 450 degree slab of pink meat out of the oven and just take a, take a little cut of it just to see? I'm always, I do wonder sometimes, like, so I, a chef should sample their meal. Kate will tell you, I, I, I sample too much as I cook. Okay, that was, that was ambitious. However, what about meals where you can't sample, you know? Like, what if, if you're making a pizza? What, like, do all pizzas come with, like, nine slices, and then the chef takes one out to sample it, and then mashes it together to make eight? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know how they do it. Sample the source? You mind in Bitcoins? I will say, I get it. Dude, I, I'm sure this, like, and worse happens all the time in, in real kitchens. But, like, it blows my mind watching Kitchen Nightmares. Watching this one, this man, he was making a soup. And then, like, while the soup was boiling, he just put his thumb in the soup. Oh, my God. And then pulled it out and sucked on it and was like, it's good. It's like, how can you... First off, like, it's hot. Secondly, when was the last time, like, you washed your hands? How many how many soups you been going around licking off your thumb here? Also, I didn't realize that, like, when you... Like, when... So, the, at Jay Willie's, they were like, hey, man, like, are those ribs hot? Are those ribs hot? And then the, the manager just, like, mashed his hand into the top of the ribs and was like, oh, yeah, they're hot. I was like, man, if only, like, someone made a device that, like, could measure heat without you having to, like, shove your hand on the top of my, my sauced food. Right? I mean, I get that it, what you don't know won't hurt you. I'm just like, it just seems like not the, not the most efficient way to do it. There's some kind of thermoscope. Exactly. Do, 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 do. 
It's less about the germs, it's more like I don't want my man's fingerprints in my barbecue sauce. Why would I just do the same thing again? All we need to do is make it to the top. Make it to the top, get the save. If you make it to the top, you get the save, you can forget this part ever happened. Real talk, how can NL live through hours of this music? Honestly, I, something's wrong with my brain. I think I get... I, I have like a... Oh, okay. I have a weird relationship with frustration. I would never say that I don't get frustrated. But I do think I get frustrated by different things than other people. Like, like dying over and over in a video game? Man, that's just the freaking... That's just the day that ends with Y for me, right? I get incredibly frustrated by people in public that think they're the only, they don't consider how their actions affect other people, especially like while driving or like, you know, the classic example, you like be in the grocery store and like need to get something, but someone else is just like talking, oh no, like on their phone in the spot where you need to like be there and you just like you move over to them and they like don't take the social cue so then you gotta like squeeze up a little closer to them and just like come on man like you're talking on the freaking phone do you really need to be standing in the nut aisle this is makeable man this is makeable it's not makeable i have bailed saved <laughs> I got scared. Drove for the first time in Vancouver the other day. It was hell. I'm telling you, man. Like, I don't, I don't want to turn this into like a, oh, well, you know, driving's like, you think driving's hard there. Try living, you know, here. But like, driving in Vancouver is a, is a constant journey of discovery, for sure. It's, uh, you'll, I, I, I see something, I see something mind-boggling just about every time I get behind the wheel. And you just kind of, I don't know, you just learn to live with it, I guess. I, I, thankfully I was not there when that lady drove down the staircase. <laughs> in, uh, I think it was an international village. I and mean, the, the fact that there's multiple stories of people driving down staircases in like the same calendar year is like, scary enough, but. Whoop. Save. You gotta. You gotta aim so high on this one, man. Let's go. There's a first time for everything. Okay, that's huge, man. Plus, no clipping on the mic. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, that's BS. Saved. The furtive. Pygmy, so easily forgotten. <laughs> oh, that was, that was incredible. Oh, they almost, they, they almost Pete Webbered me. Careful. Nicely done. Okay, we're, um, excuse me, they did not spawn in the other planks. Incredible. I just listened for the snap. It's like a good hot dog, man. Is this the Matrix 5? <laughs> Great drive-by. I did- I love that tweet that was... The picture of Obama and then the, the subtitle on the left is like... Phone, keys, wallet. And then it said, oh, oh crap, and he was running back into the White House. The furtive pygmy so easily forgotten. It's a good one. It's a, for a... For a for a specific brand of, of, of social media user, good tweet. All right, this is big. We got a good save here. <laughs> Top tier meme. I, I, I feel like we've been a little meme deficient recently. I, I mentioned that on stream the other day, but I feel like it's been, been some low memes, low meme quality. 
was happy to get a good one. Love the dancing up there. Mats Clamato was a good one. Yeah, I was a little disappointed with the performance of that tweet, but then I decided not to be like too concerned about it because I took it from a YouTube comment anyway on one of my videos. You know, I, I don't think it's stealing. Like if I take a joke from the comments, but the comments are for my video, I own them. Don't get hit. Okay, we're, we're at like a little out of sync here. I think this is great. Ladies and gentlemen, we have never seen this save before. Let's go! Okay, here we go. You know how you know how we do it. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is a freaking nightmare, man. I didn't I, <clears throat> I didn't realize you don't have to jump, okay? Tip most of the animals featured in Alt F4 World will hurt you. Wait for it. Oh no! It's alright. Going back. Going back. Going back. It's all. It's it's a it's a lesson in mastery. I told you, Jay. That was almost the run. That was almost the run. No, we'll we'll play some Loop Hero maybe tomorrow. I gotta be honest. I've been going through a little crisis on Loop Hero. I feel like, and you know, here, here's the, and I apologize, it's a little inside baseball. Doesn't really seem to get people pogged up on, on Twitch on my end. Um, but it, but it, people really seem to like it on YouTube. So I'm like, I feel like it would be better for me if I, if I kept the pog richness, if I, if I made the, the frothy broth on, on Twitch as pog rich as possible, and uh, maybe like, relegated that to YouTube recording only, but really like relegating something to YouTube re recording only basically uh, means it's dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of, it, it, it is one of those things like it's and it, I, I want to be very clear like it's not a, a hipster thing, but like now that everybody on Twitch is playing it and you know people have like watched so much of it, you know, and it, I mean, it might sound petty. I don't really mean it like that, but anytime like 90% of the, act, like chat activity gets dampened for one, and then 90% of the activity is like you placed your mountain like two tiles away from where you like should have placed it perfectly. I'm like, I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's like an ideal fit right now, but I, I want, it's a game like I want to continue to play. I just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the right place to put it is. Might just be that we we stream it and we just acknowledge that, you know, kind of stream it as like, uh, it's more for me than it is for the viewer at that point, but. <laughs> Gotta put it next to the campfire. <laughs> Well, it's not really like bowing down to Chad. Like if there was a ton of backseating, but then there was also like, cause I, you know, the backseating is really helpful for the most part. All right, well, see you later. Um, but then there was also like, uh, you know, a decent amount of comments that weren't even like, oh, this is the best thing I've ever seen. But like, like right there, there's a lot of lows. That's, that's fun. Anytime, you know, you play Alt F4, it's a nice feeling as a streamer, you know, something funny happens. A, a, a complete chat cycle of lulls goes through, and a little, a little reward center of your brain is like, yeah, yes, yes. You play Loop Hero, like, you know, there's like a message every 10 seconds, and it's usually about like something you did wrong, and I'm like, I'm not sure if this is like... I'm not sure if this is the content I want to be making. <laughs> mm, okay, good stuff, good stuff. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not just farming dopamine for you, I'm farming it for me, too. I do like playing Loop Hero, though. I don't know, it might be one of those things, I just like... <laughs> what have- WHAT HAVE I DONE, DUDE?! That's alright, we- you know, we're still in a good spot here. But I will say, like, I love Loop Hero, or I like it a lot. I think it's a great game. And I apologize, Jay, for this. But I will say, when I was on Twitch this weekend, I look at my following list, and it was Loop Hero, Loop Hero, Loop Hero, Loop Hero, Loop Hero, Loop Hero, Art, Loop Hero. I went, oh, friggin'. Somebody just... I'm just a wafer-thin slice of, like, Call of Duty or something like that. Come on. <laughs> Just give me a wafer thin slice of Call of Duty. Or Tarkov? I don't know, man. Like, ah, jeez. I mean, if we're talking, if we're talking Dan, I would, I would rather watch Dan play Tarkov than, than I think Loop Hero. Just cause like, uh, Dan, Dan provides something to the Tarkov experience that I can't create for myself. Oh, we got saved. AKA you wouldn't watch either. <laughs> oh, hello. Yo! You're gonna start feeding yourself today? Right now, yo, what's her first meal gonna be? That's a lot of power. Okay, rice it is, and and a little water. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> Chat says garlic bread. What? Chat said garlic bread. That's a good point. Pizza. Yo, okay, what are we doing for dinner tonight? Oh, can we do the chicken? Oh. What is it? What's the chicken called again? Yang Nyam Tong Tong Duck. Oh, hey, sorry, baby. I, I kept her from her first meal. You can tell it's good because it almost sounds like it has yum yum in the name. Almost any food that has a repeated syllable at the start of it is delicious. Yang Yan, Tong Duck, Tom Yum, yeah, Don Don Noodles, M and M's, Couscous. See, the f the food's so nice they named it twice. Obam Pan. Yeah, yeah. I started to run out. I'll, I'll take what I can get. Pizza Pizza? Dude, here's... So I've talked about Pizza Pizza before. It's a Canadian pizza chain. It's really, really not good. Um, I don't know if, if my tastes have just changed as I've gotten older, because as a kid I thought I was really good. You get like pizza by the slice and it had like a crispy bottom and you can get weird flavors and stuff. Now that I'm a little older, I freaking hate it, man. Like it sucks. Um, like it's pure cardboard and the locations are cursed. There's not many in, in the Vancouver area. There is one, um, I think like closer to Burnaby, which is maybe like a half hour away. And uh, all I know about it is that there's somebody like, I, I think they're like a financial advisor in Vancouver. They're in hot water because they went to the Pizza Pizza when they were hammered and then started shouting like racial epithets. And everybody that read the news story was kind of like, hey, you know, if it's going to happen anywhere, it's probably going to be at the Pizza Pizza. But then like they, they got fired from their job and they released a statement like, the statement was like, they were the victim. They were like, I've never experienced anything like this before in my life. And I was like... Bro, you caused it. What do you mean, never experienced it? Anyway, hold on. Let's go, dude! I told you, we're back. We're learning. 
Okay, okay. I'm telling you, the last time I had Pizza Pizza, I've said this before. First off, I think it, it did something to my stomach, for one. Um, oh, jeez. But I got a, I got a Panzerati. I w it was when I was in Toronto. I was visiting Mouth. I got a Panzerati, and uh, it was so bad, I only ate like a third of it. Which is crazy for me to eat. To, if you eat half of something, like that's an admonishment. And a, a, a third of it is like, it's a curse, basically. Let's go! And then on top of that, um, I was hammered. You know how bad like a pizza product has to be for you to not finish it when you're drunk? Like it's, it was, it was awful. All I'm saying is I hear the baby crying. Maybe we should have gone with the garlic bread. Maybe the gar- uh, Dude, I could go for some garlic bread too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I hear the baby crying. It's coming round the bend. Do I haven't had pizza in a bit too. Oh man. I don't know if this is controversial, but it's a, like a pretty great food. I'm mad. I'm mad because I didn't want to go. And then I thought, oh, it must have already fired. That hurts. That hurts. I even, like, I was watching, because I had the baby on, on baby duty this morning. I was watching, like, some crappy Canadian Food Network version of, like, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Called, like, the Ultimate Food Bucket List. Hi, my name's John. And I've got a bucket list to eat all the greatest food I possibly can. Yeah, okay, buddy. It's called Real Life. I got nothing against John Catucci, I apologize, but like, it's just like, it, you don't, it's it's just a weird like agenda for a show. It's not a food bucket list. You got a list of places that, that seem good. You know, it's not like you're dying. Unless you, if, if so, I apologize, but, um, no, it's not the same John as the golf club. We, we have multiple Johns in, in Canada, um, but, they were at some pizza place in Edmonton, and they were making like, let's go, let's not go. They were making uh, 